Life on Earth depends on the energy from the Sun. The Earth orbits the Sun at just the right distance. A little further out, and water would freeze as it would on Mars. A little further in, and water would boil and become a gas as it would on Venus and Mercury. In astronomy, the region around a star where a planet could support liquid water at its surface is called the habitable zone. The green region here is the habitable zone of our solar system. Venus and Mars are in this zone, but are either too hot or too cold for liquid water. In this video, I'll explain two laws of physics that explain this. Viewed from the Earth, the Sun is so bright you cannot look at it for a very long time without using a special filter. This is an artist's impression of what the Sun would look like as seen from the planetoid Setna, which is about 85 times as far from the Sun as Earth is. That's about three times as far as Neptune, the outermost planet in our solar system. The Sun is much weaker, just distinguishable from the background stars. The reason that Venus is too hot and Mars too cold is due to the inverse square law. The energy the Sun emits each second, its power, is spread out over a sphere. For larger distances, the energy of the Sun is spread out over larger and larger areas. There is a quantity to express this, which is intensity. Intensity is the emitted power per unit of area. Twice as far from the Sun, the energy has spread out over an area four times as large. So the intensity has become four times as small. In a formula that's I intensity equals power divided by the surface of the sphere, 4 pi r squared. The inverse square law only applies when the source is point-like and spreads out its energy equally in all directions. The Sun is hardly point-like, but relative to the distance Sun-Earth, it's a good approximation. Let's look at some numerical examples. Earth is at a distance of 150 million kilometers from the Sun. That distance is called an astronomical unit, or AU. Venus is at a distance of 0.7 AU. That's 1.4 times as near to the Sun as Earth. 1.4 squared equals about 2. That means that each square meter of the surface of Venus would receive about twice as much energy as the Earth. That's without taking into account the atmosphere of Venus or Earth. Mars is at a distance of 1.5 AU from the Sun. So 1.5 times as far out from the Sun as Earth. 1.5 squared equals 2.25. So a square meter of Mars' surface receives more than twice as little energy from the Sun as Earth. That's the inverse square law at work. The inverse square law is only part of the story why water is liquid on Earth. The other part has to do with the natural greenhouse effect and Wien's law. The Sun emits its energy mainly as electromagnetic waves, such as visible light, infrared and ultraviolet. All these waves travel at the speed of light, but infrared has a longer wavelength than visible light, and ultraviolet a shorter wavelength than visible light. Most of the sun's energy is emitted at those wavelengths, as you can see in this radiation graph. On the horizontal axis you can see the wavelength of emitted radiation, on the vertical axis the intensity of that wavelength. All objects with a certain temperature have a radiation graph that is similar in form to the one of the sun. The only difference is that the wavelength of the peak and the height of the graph depends on temperature. The wavelength at which the object emits highest intense radiation is called the peak wavelength. For the Sun, this peak lies around 500 nanometers. The Earth's atmosphere is transparent to visible light and partly transparent to infrared. Some sunlight scatters off of clouds and the surface, but a large part is absorbed by the Earth's surface and atmosphere. As a result, the temperature rises and the Earth itself starts to emit radiation according to a similar radiation graph as I've shown for the Sun. Now this is where Wien's law comes in. Wien's law states that if you double the temperature of an object, the peak wavelength becomes twice as small. You can see that in these graphs. As temperature rises, the peak moves left to shorter wavelengths. That's also expressed in Wien's displacement law. Lambda max times temperature equals a constant, Wien's constant. Now the temperature of the Earth is much lower than the Sun, so the wavelength at which the Earth emits most intense radiation is much longer, in the infrared. That radiation is mostly absorbed by the gases 
in Earth's atmosphere, such as water vapor, methane, and, you might have guessed, carbon dioxide. So the term greenhouse effect is really not very appropriate. A greenhouse is mostly transparent to infrared radiation. It's the shielding effect from the wind that causes a greenhouse to be so hot. I'd like to demonstrate Wien's law with this light bulb here. Inside the bulb is a thin tungsten filament, which will become hot and start to radiate when you run a current through it. The infrared images are taken at intervals to show how the temperature of the bulb increases. At low voltages, the power of the bulb is low and it will be very dim. The color is red to orange. As I increase the voltage, it will become brighter and brighter and the color will turn to yellow, then almost white. This image from the Hubble Space Telescope reveals a small region of a cluster of stars. As you can see, stars have color. Some are reddish, some bluish, some white. The color a star has depends on its temperature, as dictated by Wien's law. When you look up at the, at the clear sky at night and you let your eyes get accustomed to the dark long enough, you can actually see that the stars have color. So why is Venus too hot and Mars too cold for liquid water? Due to the inverse square law, Venus receives too much and Mars too little energy from the Sun. More importantly, Venus has a very dense atmosphere with a lot of carbon dioxide which causes a runaway greenhouse effect. And Mars lacks a very thick atmosphere. Its an atmosphere is about 60 times less dense as Earth's atmosphere. So let's take care of our own home planet before we consider moving to Mars.